Hello, my name is Matthew Pfeiffer with MattPfeifferCoaching.com. Welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel, I create videos and content about toxic, narcissistically abusive relationships. If you have a question that you'd like for me to answer, you can send it to JustAskMatt at MattPfeifferCoaching.com. Again, that is JustAskMatt at MattPfeifferCoaching.com. Just make sure you keep the email two to three paragraphs max. And you're also very direct and to the point of what your question actually is. If it's too long. If it's too lengthy, unfortunately, I will not be able to get to it. Also, make sure you hit the subscribe notification and the bell notification so you're notified each and every time I upload a new video. I upload new videos on this channel five days a week, Monday through Friday. With all that being said, let's get into today's email. This email comes from a person who is struggling with someone that they have been with for 11 years, and they recently went through a separation. They separated, and this person is still throwing things in their face and making accusations and you know how that typically works out when you're dealing with someone who is narcissistic or toxic and doing those things. Uh, and there was even an occasion where this person fought this person's older brother. So let's get into this. Let's break it down and let's see if we can help this person out and may even possibly help you out through this process as well. So this email reads, hey, Matt, uh, am I the asshole? And so that's kind of a joke because if you if you follow me on other platforms, you know that I read a lot of am I the asshole from uh, Reddit. Uh, and so um, that's just how they decided to open up this email. So, hey, Matt, am I, am I the asshole? I've just separated from my child's father after being with them for 11 years. For those 11 years, I have also allowed him to belittle me, lose friends, make decisions based on avoiding conflict with him. Uh, he cheated on me, yet accused me of accused me throughout the relationship of cheating lying and talking poorly about my family. So one of the things that we want to point out is that this person is cheating, but they were accusing them, being accused of cheating. So with narcissism, with people who are toxic, quite often they will accuse you of things that they are actually doing themselves. And the reason why they belittle family members and that sort of thing is because they actually want to pull you away from your family. They want to isolate because oftentimes they know that your friends, your family are empowering you and that's the support system. So they want to pull you away. So they'll belittle your family in an attempt to get you to remove yourself from your family. Uh, this email continues. Two Sundays ago, he decided to talk poorly about my family and calling me a fat bitch, something he often does when he is upset. And so I want to, I want to be clear about something. And a lot of times people who struggle with codependency will excuse, and, and this person who sent this email said that they have excused a lot of poor behavior. A lot of times people will excuse poor behavior because the person is upset. And so we have to understand that it's 100% okay for someone to be upset. Everyone at some point in time is going to be angry. They're going to be upset. But what should not happen, we have to understand that there's a very big difference between disagreements and disrespect. It's important that before people start getting upset and before you actually start dating and before you get too involved with someone, that you actually understand your own personal definition of what the difference is between di disrespect and disagreements. There's a big difference. So is it okay for this person to be upset by something and for them to, yeah. And as a matter of fact, we have to understand that in a healthy relationship, disagreements are actually required. It lets you know that that person is being authentic. But what we can't have is for that to cross over to disrespect and for us to understand the difference. You know, name calling, belittling, gaslighting, obviously physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse. So once we get into those areas, we're now st starting to talk about disrespectful behavior. This email continues, uh, something he does often when he is upset. After I told him countless times not to, and I warned him if he continues, I will let, I will let him know how he really feels. I shared what he was, I shared what he was saying to my family uh, and my family chimed in uh, and it resulted in him fight, fighting my older brother. So one of the things that I want to mention here is that it sounds like you were close to setting a boundary, but we want to get a little bit more firm and a little bit more clear on your boundaries. And also like when we have someone that's calling names, 
uh, we want to be very clear. We want, we want to use an if you, I will statement. If you continue to call me names, I'm leaving. I'm whatever the execute. One of the things we have to understand about boundaries, a lot of times people will make these flimsy boundaries and that aren't ex executable. Stop calling me names. Okay. Well, what if they don't? Because you have no control over that other person. So uh, to empower ourselves, if you keep talking, if you keep calling me names, I'm leaving. I'm walking out. I'm going home. I'm going to do this, right? If you do this, I will do that, right? And so for uh, a lot of times people, we have we have boundaries, examples of boundaries literally all over the place, right? The speed limit is a perfect example of a boundary. If you go past the speed limit, guess what? You're going to get a ticket. If you go 150 miles per hour over the speed limit, guess what? Your car is getting repoed. Right? We know what the what the repercussions are. And so you want to extend these boundaries. You want to be very a lot more clear about these boundaries instead of saying something like, I'll tell you about yourself. I'll call you a name back. We don't want to engage. We don't want to. I know it's tempting. I'm not saying that people are going to be perfect all the time, but we want to pull back from uh, taking toxic behavior and throwing our own toxic behavior because that's not going to get anyone anywhere. Um, the only thing that's going to get is it's going to get that person to accuse you of exactly what you're accusing them of. And I tell people all the time, it's like that Spider-Man meme where you have two identical Spider-Mans just basically pointing at each other. So this email continues. I shared what he was doing to my family and my family chimed in and it resulted in him fight, fighting my older brother for, for his birthday. I brought him, I bought him an iPhone because he used to say that I, that you never buy anything expensive, even though I bought him countless expensive items over the years and he never truly appreciated it. When he, when he disrespected me, he called me outside my name, I took the phone back and gifted and gifted myself. Now he keeps pushing it in my, uh, pushing it in my face saying that he deserves it regardless of what he did. So one of the things that we start and we're starting to hear is this standard of the way that people are being treated. He can treat you any way that he wants without any sort of re repercussions. And uh, you haven't put this in the email, but I have a feeling that he's probably said or alluded to something along the lines of unconditional love. Fuck that. So one of the things we have to understand that is that unconditional love, people who are toxic, people who are narcissistic, throw that term around a lot. And that's not for adults. Unconditional love is for children, is for the parents to their children, not for the adults, right? Love, when it comes to our partner, is very much conditional. You better not cheat. You better not uh, start being abusive and controlling that sort of thing. And that's what, guess what that is? Those are your boundaries. Those are your expectations. Those are the agreements. And those are the, the conditions of the relationship, right? And so we have this, we have, uh, I'm hearing a lot of double standards. I can call you, I can call you whatever I want. I, I can do whatever I want. I can fight your brother, but I still expect top of the line treatment in terms of gift in terms of the way that, in terms of what you're calling me. And so we have to understand that you're doing the, the exact right thing by going through the separation. And one of the things we have to begin to look at the, look at is accepting the fact that this behavior, even with the separation, doesn't sound like it's changing. and it doesn't sound like it's gonna change, in particular, especially at the fact that this person is fighting your brother. So we might want to reconsider this whole thing, right? Because even after a separation, we're not hearing uh, any sort of uh, change, any sort of desire for change. All we're hearing is a uh, continuation of double standards and continuation of a lot of the mistreatment and the belittling and everything that you mentioned right from the beginning. So um, you, your original question, I think, is, am I the asshole? I don't know. I haven't, you know, I haven't heard anything. In one of, but one of the things I will typically, that I do typically say, is that we have to understand that a lot of times people ask the question, am I the narcissist? Am I the problem in the relationship? And one of the things we have to understand about, and at least on my channel, I know there's a lot of channels that that don't that aren't very forthcoming about the truth, but the truth of the matter is, is that there's not one person that's a problem in a relationship. It's both. 
right? So one of the things I'm very clear about that is that we have to understand a lot of times people just allow for people to just point fingers and say that person is the toxic person, that person is the narcissistic person. But the reality of it is, is that both people need work. Because if there weren't some elements of toxic behavior, am I saying that you're a narcissist? Am I saying that you're a bad person? Am I saying that you're an evil person? Anything like that? No, none of those things, right? But we have to understand that for someone to get into a toxic relationship or even into a relationship with a narcissist, that there has to be some elements of toxic behavior, even if that's passive aggressiveness. Am I saying it's malicious? No. However, we do have to understand, again, cannot stress this enough, that this is not a binary situation where it's just uh, all one person's fault, right? Again, and, and I also want to be very clear, this isn't victim blaming or victim shaming or anything like that, but we have to understand that both people have to need work, need healing. Even if someone who's even if someone is struggling with codependency, we have to understand that codependent behavior also is not healthy behavior, right? A lot of times people get this confused. They think that one person is a narcissist, and that means that the other person is innocent, right? And that's not necessarily the case, right? We have a narcissist and we have a codependent who also have has their own set of dynamics and set of behaviors that also need healing and need to be corrected. So thank you very much for writing in. Anyone else who wants to write in, make sure you send it to just ask Matt at mattpfeiffercoaching.com. Again, that is just ask Matt at mattpfeiffercoaching.com. So make sure you keep that email two to three paragraphs max. And you're also very direct and to the point of what your question actually is. So that being said, thank you very much. And I will see you in the next video. Mm-hmm.